Up next on Inside the SECA, Formula 600 with a national champ. Good to be here. Welcome to this edition of Inside the SECA. I'm Brian Belansky, episode 159, I believe. And joining me tonight, none other than two-time SECA runoffs champion, Cal Stewart. How you doing, Cal? Oh, very good. Great. Busy day, crazy day. I'm here, though. Good to be here. Well, we're. I'm really happy to have you on. We, we met last year, I think, for the first time at the runoffs. And uh, you were you were the pole sitter for the runoffs last year, and I was going and running around doing all of my stuff for the runoffs pre-shows, and I was trying to interview every pole sitter. So I finally found and caught up with you, and we started talking, and your personality and passion was like jumping out of your body. And I'm like, this is a guy I got to have on the podcast. <laughs> Well, good to be here. So I start every show with the same exact question with every single person, and that is, how did you get mixed up in this crazy sport that we love? Oh, my goodness. That's a long story, but um, it, it really kind of started as a, as a kid. I was like maybe 10 years old. My dad took us all on vacation to Dells, Wisconsin, yep. and I got a chance to race a go-kart for the first time and I beat all the adults and that's that that was the hook I think from there forward I always wanted to, to race cars and be in a race car and uh, um, that's really where it all started uh, but it wasn't till much later uh, after anesthesia school that I was actually able to, to get into racing uh -huh. my dad was always afraid I was going to get hurt yep yep so yep. um so I never got a chance to drive until uh, 26 or so is when I started racing go kart. Okay, okay. So for for the folks who don't know, the Wisconsin Dells is kind of like a a huge tourist trap for families to go on vacation. There's a, a amusement parks and theme parks and and remember Fort Dells? It was kind of like a a place to go where it was all like like uh, uh, wilderness themed stuff and a water park. It was a ton of fun. But uh, that's that's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Yeah. So between that and twenty and age twenty six, when you when you actually started doing it, did you do anything kind of in that time period? Um. Well, I I raced bicycles, uh, mountain bikes, road race. Um. Big big cyclists uh, on a sponsored team for many years. Uh, ran track. I was a gymnast. Uh, okay. Um. Karate. Uh, competed in California. A lot of sports, but I just didn't get a chance to do motorsports. I uh, had a motocrosser that we played on in college. Okay. Yeah. I would argue that a lot of those sports that you just reeled off are actually more dangerous than motorsports. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I did a, I dabbled in a little bit of bike racing, and, and that's crazy, especially like criteriums. That's nuts. Oh, yeah. Um, gymnastics. You know, yeah. you can fall and break your neck doing that, you know, oh, I mean, yeah. it just uh, so I, I think you're actually safer in the race car, right? <laughs> That's probably not too far from the truth. Yeah. Um, we, we got to do a little um, road race motorcycling to okay. uh, for oh, we, we stopped racing cars for a period there. And I uh, did some road racing on a Jixxer 1000. OK, OK. That's probably one of the craziest things I've done. Yeah, motorcycle racers are a little twisted. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and yeah. I, that's probably about the nicest way I could say it. <laughs> that is not too far from the truth. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Too much fun. Too much fun. So when did you find the SCCA? Well, um, SCCA didn't come until after karting. Okay. Uh, after I, I graduated from anesthesia and started practicing, um, I bought my first go-kart, and um, we did really good in karts. Um, ran for about eight seasons and won ten championships in eight years. Wow. So we were always at the front and, you know, doing well. Um, then the story kind of went, there was a guy I raced go-karts with that bet a guy named Jay Novak. Oh, yeah. You know, um, that 
a go karter wouldn't be faster than him in his in his race car. So <laughs> they uh, they got me a test in Jay's car, and I was like three seconds a lap faster at Gratton in his car. Yep. So uh, they put me in a regional race, and I lapped everybody but second place. And a lady named Patty Klimchuk, I'm not sure if you know that name. Mm-hmm. She wrote about it. Then a, a guy named Jim Frank read the article, and uh, a friend introduced me to Jim. Jim was the importer of Mondial Formula 2000 cars. Okay. Out of uh, Northern Ireland, and he asked me to come and drive his race. So I started driving for Jim, and I was driving Jay's F440 at the time, too. So I was running both cars. When I got a, a go kart, yeah. yeah. So, so that that kind of brought me into SCCA. Sure, sure. So before we go deeper into the SCCA stuff, what were you racing in go karts with all your success? Um, well, we we started off in in sprinters. Okay. Um, for about a year or two, but then I discovered the lay down sprints. Okay. And just love those, man. Oh yeah. Ninety five miles an hour in a in a go kart, that would just it was a hoot, and we we um we we did those for about I don't know three four years, and then I graduated up to uh, to laydowns. Okay. So I ran uh, laydowns for four seasons. I ended up having two laydowns, and I ran four classes a weekend. So we were doing four forty five minute races in a weekend, putting in over five hundred miles a weekend in go kart. So and, w- were you doing that at like Road America? Road America, Mid Ohio, Gingerman. Okay. They so, run them all over Daytona. So, so, a, so you've done Daytona too? I never raced Daytona in my go kart because every year it seems like somebody would get really hurt, and my wife was scared of us going <laughs> to Daytona. So we we never went to Daytona. All right. So let me ask you this question: I've seen lay down carts at Road America. Right. It has got to be crazy <laughs> going down the hill towards turn five oh, man. in a laydown cart. Tell me what that's like. Man, I tell you what. You're sitting, laying in your back in the loose position. Yep. And, and we're doing 115 miles an hour in a laydown, about a half inch off the ground. And you run so close that the draft packs, there would be like three lines Three lines wide, three carts deep, and we were running two, three, maybe a foot yeah. apart from each other. Uh, it's nothing like it. I loved go karts. And the thing is about go karts is you could use English, yeah, body English to change how the cart was. If you wanted to, if you wanted the back to go over, you just scooted a little. If you wanted to front, you you, you move your body. That's and when crazy. You move your body, the cart actually reacted. You could lean forward or push back with, with your shoulders. And make the back grip a little bit yeah. better. There are so many nuances in karting. I I I love racing carts. I yeah. bet. I bet. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's talk about Formula Six Hundred for for a few minutes. Sure. Um. So I learned at the first Super Tour I I broadcast down at Sebring. I I said something that was wrong. I don't remember what it was. And the Formula 600 community was very, very quick to correct me. (laughs) So a lot of passion within the ranks and and which is really cool because it's a really kind of small, close knit class. I kind of compare it to Formula V. You know, everybody loves with their cars. They love talking about their cars. It was just really cool. But it's it's the class started back in the day as a Formula 440. With right. a 440 cc motorcycle or a, a snowmobile motor in it, right? Snowmobile motor, right? Kawasaki. Right, right. So, so talk to us a little bit about the evolution from Formula 440 to where we are today. Well, uh, let's see. I started racing go karts. My first runoffs race was in Jay's F440. Okay. That, that was in '93. Um. Those carts were fun, but they're like nowhere near where we are today. Right. Uh, the carts were still um, developing as far as how they handle, and then along came the the um, the, the sports car nose. Okay. And, and the Nova cars were one of the first cars that had the full sport, sports car nose. That gave us a huge advantage on top end, I thought. 
Right. Uh, the KBSs and the other cards. The Red Devils. They had a little bit more sidebar, but the the Nova cards definitely had a, a, a top end arrow advantage because of the design. Um, then um, after the we ran the, the 440 for about two years. Then along came the AMW. Okay. Uh, we ran that for several years. Then the Rotec came in, the 493, 494. Then from there, um, the motorcycle motors came in about the same time that the 593s came in, maybe a year difference. And um, now uh, now it's, it's really not a... a, a 500s anymore it's 600s they, they changed the name of the, the class because of 593s and and the uh, motorcycle 600 motors are predominant motors in the class that's pretty much how the evolution of the motors right right and other than the changes in the motors and i'm guessing a lot of that change came from difficulty of getting parts for those motors that's usually how the evolution comes right yep that's pretty much it um the kawasaki motors got Harder and harder to find parts for the 440s, so they came up with the AMW. Then the AMW was short-lived. Um, again, you know, a part issue. Then the the Rotax. There were so many snowmobiles that had the Rotax motor. They thought that that would be a, a better fix, and it was, and it did it did help the problem. But um, again, parts became more of an issue. Um, yeah. Then the the motorcycle motor. What had that was something that they talked about for quite a while, and it finally came in. There's so many bike motors out there that it would be easy to find a crashed motorcycle motor. Right. I I still think that that's the way to go, but yeah. Um, the, the the two cycle motors are just as fast, and my sure sure. Does the um. What's the difference in in power with the the six hundreds? Obviously, you've gained speed, right? From between that and the four forties. Um, yeah, they. I, I don't remember what the horsepower was on the old four forties. Like maybe ninety five. Okay. And we're probably a hundred and five, so okay. maybe ten horsepower since then. That's not right. a terrible amount. And they've restricted us okay. and the, the 600 so much that, you know, they kept it somewhere, somewhat in the ballpark. Um, and they they um, detuned or allowed the, the 493s to go pretty much. Um, they, they gave them some advantages, mechanical advantages. But right. at this point, the, the 593, if you're going to go two cycles, the way to go. And you can't go 494. Sure, sure. <laughs> So I used to refer to Formula 600s as as go karts with a bigger motor, <laughs> and, and I'm and I'm guessing if I were to do that now, I would be quickly corrected. Tell me the difference between driving the cart and driving a Formula 600. Oh, well, I mean the the closest similarity would be that they both have that solid axle. Okay. Then from there it all changes very quickly because um, go-karts don't really have uh, suspension. Um, the flat, the axles or the, the chassis flexes, you can you can change that a little bit. You can change axle flex and a few things in it, and you can change caster and camber and all that. But we actually have wheel motion. Like we are, we have probably, you know, I'm, I'm sitting one and a half inches off the ground and I'll hit the ground. Right. So we've got an inch and a half travel, and in full roll, you you can see them move quite a bit. Right. I can run over curbs a little bit, a lot better than a go kart will. Um, I have a lot of go karters, but the, right. the six hundreds are more car than a go kart. Sure, yeah. sure. Besides right. the heavy and more power. So, um, what what's it feel like when you bottom that thing out? Oh man, <laughs> I cringe. <laughs> we were talking briefly about Gratton, right? The jump at the, the jump at Gratton. I got a picture in my office on my desk, and I am about a foot off the ground, off four wheels in wow. the air. Wow! 
and you land that thing and every time you land it you feel it just smack the ground and i just every time i go over that thing i go oh i'm gonna have to replace my floor oh yeah <laughs> it is not fun hitting the bottom hitting the ground on that thing yeah. well and being an anesthesiologist, you probably have some good back doctors you know. You might need to replace some discs as well, right? <laughs> Hopefully not. But, uh, what, what's um, what what? How much fun is it? I mean, you guys get out there, and and I didn't realize because I didn't pay much attention to the class until I started doing the super tour stuff, because we don't have yeah. very many out here in in the West Coast racing. Yeah. Um. You guys, a, a good Formula 600 is every bit as fast as a Formula F, right? Oh, I think we are faster than Formula Fs just about everywhere now. I mean, yeah. uh, the pointy end. Sure. Um, yeah, the, we should always, and I, and I kind of use the force to kind of judge how I'm doing. I should be X amount of seconds faster than Ford. Um, but the Fords handle better. They get their they get their speeds in a, a little bit uh, different different way than we do because the Fords have the full suspension. They got you know triple adjustable shocks. Um, they're they're wider. They're independent suspension. They can run over the curbs. They point in better. I mean, they the Fords really do handle well. We we have maybe an advantage in mid mid range corners and the top. Right. But a good Ford should be able to outhandle um, most five hundreds or at least at least most of them. Right at the point. I'd say I'd say the top Ford guys will be a little bit faster than most corners, especially small corners. Right. And we've got a little advantage on the top. Yeah. Right. So we're getting ready to head to Road America for the for the for the runoffs this year. Um, right. You've got two national championships. Where are your two? Where were your? Well, one was last year at VIR. Where was your first one at? Um, well, the, the first one was at Daytona. Okay, and that was that was probably one of my fa favorite races. Yeah, so Daytona was. We had the car really set up for Daytona. Um, uh, Clinton was there, and uh, um, yeah, we, we, we had the car really dialed in for Daytona. And the car was really built for to win Daytona. Right. When Jay designed the car, um, well, first, I, I was I was racing motorcycles. I'd stopped racing cars, cars for a while. Right. And Jamie Novak calls me up, and he says, hey, Cal, I'm getting ready to build this new car. Why don't you come over and take a look at the design? So I said, okay, I'll come over and scope it out. So I, I went over there, and uh, um, he showed it to me and said, that's beautiful, let's build it. So it took about a year or so, year and a half, to, to finish the car and put it on the road. But the idea was really to make it um, have more top end than everybody by decreasing the frontal area, and that's what he did. That's why we have an, a little bit of an advantage because we've got the smallest hole right. area of anybody else. Yeah. So I'm hoping and hoping that advantage. We'll see what happens at Road America. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of flat out at Road America, isn't there? Yeah. There's some. There's some guys though. There, like Aaron Ellis has a lot of has big top end. Uh, um, McCree has a blade just like mine. He's got a lot of big top end. Um, um, last year at VIR, not this year, but last year, um, uh, James Weida was seeing 141. Now this year he was a little bit down on, on tune or power or something, but, uh, he was faster last year. So it's not that much difference. And there's, I, I anticipate I wrote America to be a barn burner and, uh, these cars draft really well. So. You don't have to be the fastest in the straight line to stay with someone. Yeah. Did you just say he was 141? Yeah, we just saw 141 last year. Is that the trap speed? That was the trap speed. Wow. What's it like yeah. to be going 141 miles an hour or an inch off the ground? <laughs> I tell you what, man. These cars are so much fun to drive. Um, and they feel so good when you're flying in them. They're really stable. They're very stable. Um, 
I think we're, we're, we have the same top end as, as like a Continental and some FE2s, but we just don't have the downforce. You know, they're, they have so much more downforce. That's where they make their, 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 uh, their times. Right. Um, we, if we had the downforce, we probably wouldn't have the top end. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely, yeah. it's gotta be crazy. <laughs> well, at Daytona, we saw 159. Wow. In a slingshot draft. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and your and, and your wife was worried about you in a cart. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. My wife is funny. She, we like I said, we we uh, we ran motorcycles for a while. And we were seeing 180 down the back straight in Mid Ohio. Yeah, every lap, she hated it. She oh, hated I, the motorcycles. So yeah, uh, our, our our compromise was that we would build the race car and have a have a seat belts and yeah. harness and a roll cage, you know, some stuff around me. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. <clears throat> so last year was my first year following the whole Super Tour, and we were at Sebring. You were at Sebring last year, right? I didn't make Sebring, no. Well, whichever, I've never driven Sebring. Okay. That's Wh- DIR. Okay, whichever race was your first Super Tour race last year? Atlanta. Atlanta, okay. I, I, I yeah. was in, you know, with Greg doing our stuff, and – we got to Saturday, and and your name was on the 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 qualifying order for your race, and and Greg said, um, you know, C- Calvin Stewart's not going to be with us today because because he's uh, he's he's honoring the Sabbath, and that's the first time, honestly, in thirty years of racing, that I've actually heard that, and and you know, of <laughs> course, now I'm now I'm asking questions in my head. Tell us a little bit about your faith and how that plays into your to your racing. Well, you know, quite a while ago, Ruth and I decided we would we would just honor God since He's done so much for us um, by keeping the fourth command. Fourth commandment basically says um, that you won't work on the Sabbath, the seventh day of the Sabbath. Um, so we we um, we just don't race on the Sabbath. We'll go to church. We'll watch church on TV. We relax. I spin. Um, that's our day of rest, and um, it's been it's been working for us, and uh, it's uh, it's something that we we committed to to staying with, and uh, we just we don't race on the Sabbath, and it's just kind of like a lamb. A lion in the sand. Yeah. We don't lose them as that, you know. And uh, that's our day where we just take off, chill, right? go to the park. Like at Watkins Glen, Watkins Glen State Park. I love going to that park on the Sabbath. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That's very nice. Very nice. But I, that's just that's a commitment that Ruthie and I have, have uh, made, and it's, it's been really good. We've been blessed because of it. I, I respect that very much so, and um, uh, I just the first time I'd heard it, I'm like, okay, that's a question I'd, I'd, I need to learn a little bit more about how that works for, for you, and and that's that's pretty amazing. So, um, yeah, one of our sponsors is actually SabbathTruth.com. Right, it's right, a, a website. Yep, yep. Yeah. I I saw that on the side of the car. So, um, yeah. so so that begs the next question: has, has the runoffs ever fallen? Has your race at the runoffs ever fallen on the Sabbath? Well, fortunately, not very often. Okay. Because <laughs> we'd already said that we wouldn't race it if, if it fell on the Sabbath. But at, when it when the race when the runoffs were in Sonoma, they were on Saturday. Okay. So we actually drove flew out to Sonoma to watch qualifying and hang out and and we we were at the RDC dinner and just kind of made a really nice vacation out of it. Um, but we didn't we didn't race obviously. So, um, yeah, it, that's the only year that since I've been run, running that they, they did fall on the tab. Yeah. So. I haven't seen the schedule for this year's runoff, so I'm I'm hoping it doesn't fall on the Sabbath for your sake because I want to see I, know. I want to see I like you it. going down into turn five in this car at 150 miles an hour. Absolutely. That's <laughs> well. Cool. I hope not. I you know I. I hope we don't. Yeah. I, I just you just cross that bridge when you get there. But, right. Right. Yeah. Right. So you started you this dream 
uh, many, many years ago at a kid cart race at, at, uh, in the Wisconsin Dells. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, do you remember what year that was? Approximately? Oh my God. I was 10 years old. So that's a long time. Okay. <laughs> so now, many years later, you've yeah. had two national championships. You are a member of the Road Racing Drivers Club as the as the Mark Donahue Award winner. Um, tell us a little bit about that, how, how that all came together. The uh, Donahue Award yeah. and the RDC? Well, um, Matt Strand and I had one of the best races I've ever had at Daytona. Clint was on the pole uh, because Clint and Matt were working together uh, Matt gave him a really good toe. He got a good slingshot, and Clip nipped me on the pole by, I don't know, half a second or uh, not much. Um, but I knew I had a really good car. Um, so in the race, on the warm-up lap, um, Clip broke uh, um, something in the front end, tie rod or something. Something broke. So he wasn't harder to – we didn't get to run, run with Clint. Um, so Matt and I just went every lap, back and forth. I pass him, he passed me. I pass him, he passed me. But I knew I had the top off. So going into turn one, I would sometimes just go over, let him go by, and I'd follow him through just because I didn't want to have an incident. So I, I knew that I could pass him when I needed to. So, uh, But Matt and I had a great race, and because of that, Back and forth, we were nominated for the, for the Donahue Award and won the Donahue Award. And um, Don Knowles uh, was the chairman of the Mark Donahue uh, Committee at the time. And we were becoming more active in the, in the club and going to the, to the dinners and whatnot. Um, and when Don decided to step down from club, he, he asked me if I would take his place as the chairman. So I uh, accepted it and since oh, 2017, 18, somewhere in there, I think, I've been uh, the chairman of the Donahue uh, Committee. Nice. So yeah. Every year we, we have the opportunity to, at the runoff, watch all the races and watch what's going on, then the members of the RDC um, selection committee, we vote on uh, who the Donahue Award winner. So it's been it's been really cool being a part of that whole process, getting to know the inside members. Um, Bobby Rahal's actually the president of the club. Right. So it's, it's, that's a huge honor for me to be a part of something like, like the RDC. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The the Road Racing Drivers Club is is so. I mean, that is that is hallowed ground. You know, it, <laughs> it's 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 the award that's. I believe all of the Road Racing Drivers Club members are picked by other drivers, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, yeah. It, so so you know, nobody there there are no slouches in no. any of those in any of those <laughs> names when you look at that. And, it's and crazy. To, and, and to think that, that you're part of that exclusive club, isn't that – how does that make you feel? Oh, it's, it's insane. Um, on the registry, the list of names, there's there's Calvin Stewart and then there's Jackie Stewart. <laughs> and, and I go like, oh, my God. It's just it's, – it's really cool to be a part of it. Yeah. And, um, like, um, um, they have this big dinner every year yep. before the 24 hours of Daytona. And at the dinner, they have this cocktail hour, and you're standing next to Roger Pinsky and Chip Ganassi and all these big names, and it's everything in my power not to take my cell phone out and yeah. just start clicking selfies with people. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a real big honor to be a part of that. Yeah. Every year at the Masters, they have the Masters dinner before the, yeah. the, 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 the tournament. And the only people who are allowed at that dinner are past Masters champions who are still alive. 
and I, I've had an opportunity to to interview a couple of of the of the players about what it was like the first time they were allowed to go because they had just won their first Masters. And your reaction is exactly what they say. You know, oh, I, I'm in this you. room and 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 <laughs> Arnold is here and Jack yeah. is here. And and, and I'm, a, I'm a huge golf fan. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. That, that's been obvious on this show. But they're like, I'm sitting here with the people who not they're not even my heroes. They're my dad's heroes. Yeah, exactly. And, and and it's just when you go to the, the road racing drivers club, they, they do one out here in. Um, at Long Beach at the Grand Prix, they have a dinner. Right, exactly. It's in in April. Yeah, I, I've never yeah. I've never gotten an invite to that. So Cal, you know, I'm your buddy here. <laughs> if you, if you need a plus one, let me know. <laughs> hey, we'll have to talk about that. Yeah. My wife wants to go in the worst kind of way, but we're getting ready for for um to go to Pitt. Right. So that's well, one of the reasons we can't make it <laughs> this year. Um, I'll be at Hallett. For the super tour, so yeah, even yeah. if it, even if it, I you know I just I wouldn't be able to go this year, but yeah. um, so that's not the only big time award you've received. I think you're also a Kimberly Club Club Cup winner and a President's Cup Club. Yeah, yeah, just it's crazy. Yeah, we we got the Ira Garfunkel Award, the Kimberly Cup. The Kimberly Cup was the most improved driver of the year. We got that in fifteen. Right. Then this year I, I get the call from Eric and um, he calls me and says that you're um, you won the, the President's Cup. I said, you mean I'm one of the finalists? He goes, oh, you won it. I went, what? Are you kidding me? I'm, that's another one. I'm just like totally blown away that um, that we we won that. And it's and, and it all it all boils down to. You know the competition at the pointy end is really fierce. Right. Like the the pointy end in this in this class, there's some really good guys, and some really clean, hard driving. And if you want to be at the front and win, you have got to have your act together. Right. Or you can get spanked. Yeah. Right. So, um. What's what is for those who don't know? What is the President's Cup award? What does that uh, uh, stand for? What, what's behind it? I think Eisenhower gave out the first President's Cup. Right. And it's, it's basically the uh, SCCA um, vice president, uh, the chief stewards uh, president. They, they, they come together and they select one driver, um, and it's like their, their best driver of the year right. for the runoffs. Right. For, for, for performance. Yeah. yeah. Before we get done, um, and by the way, it, it doesn't hurt that you've got this this absolutely million dollar smile, and and <laughs> you, when when you talk about it, the, the class and racing, you just you know people want to people want to hear you tell stories. So uh, I'm sure that doesn't hurt when it comes time to voting for things like you know the Donahue Award, the President's Cup. Um, you're you're a fantastic ambassador for SCCA and and for your class. So. Uh, I, I, that's a that's a big part of it as well, I'm sure. Um, so so talking about your class. So yes. l last year the numbers at the runoffs were a little meek. <laughs> I know. Uh, you have to keep ten. You, ten cars have to start at the runoffs to be runoffs eligible the following year. Uh, it, uh, to be national championship eligible the following year. And right. if you don't have ten, you go on super secret, super not so secret probation. Right, you get, I know. You get to come back one more year to the runoffs, but if you don't have ten cars there this year, you'll have a race, but you won't be racing for national championship. Right. I hear about this class. I hear about these cars. Are Are you going to be able to get the ten cars at the runoffs this year to make sure? Because once you reset the clock, if you get eleven cars this year, the clock the clock gets reset. Are we gonna have well, enough cars? I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that that people will will um, will come. There, this past year, there were there were several guys that just couldn't make it. Like right. Aaron Ellis really planned on coming, but it was a long trip. Uh, he couldn't make it, and Eric McCree was building a house. He couldn't make it. Um, Clint wasn't racing this year, but 
he's, he's raced already this year, so I, I assume he's planning on coming. So I, I think this next year, um, the competition is going to be huge. Right. You know, um, Sven, I think, is planning on going to be there. Um, I, I've heard talk of Stephen Thompson coming back, and he's a phenomenal driver. If he comes back, he, he's going to be super fast. He'll be a lot of really right there at the, at the top. Um, so I don't think we're going to have as much of a problem at Road America right. as we as we did at DIR. Was a long it's a long haul for us. It's like almost thirteen hours. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. So I'm hoping. <laughs> Come on, guys, bring your cars out. <laughs> so so did you get home from the runoffs and start to get on the phone with all the everyone that's out there and say, "Come on, we got to get this all together. Make sure this class stays alive." No, Jim Murphy's the big. Uh, sounding board for the for the for the club or for for 500s he does a really good job of uh, sure. of connecting with people um with the with the they have a website on on uh, facebook and um i i i don't think we're going to have a problem this right. year i'm hoping not anyway no so the class <laughs> sounds like it's a hoot it is uh, it really is folks my size probably have a hard time getting in those cars so th that's a consideration. But if someone's watching and wants to get involved, are there plenty of cars out there to scoop up a car and, and get out there and go racing? Well, you know, I just I just looked on um, Facebook today, and some someone said they just bought a um, a uh, a car, and I think there's some cars out there. Um, I don't know who's actually or if anyone's actually manufacturing uh, right now. Right. But there's. There's so many cars out there that are probably just not being run. Right. They're probably for sale. Right. Um, if someone was interested, you know, I, I would, you know, make it known that they were looking for a car. I'm sure there's something. Sure. Um, yeah. That that can be. Yeah. Yeah. Leon Leon Mitchell's a, another really good source. Um, he he runs Jack Walbrand and and uh, has that camp in Indianapolis. Um, I would try Lee on it if someone was really serious about getting a car. I mean, the cars are a riot. They're short wheel base. There's plenty of plenty of grip. Um, we pull like two Gs. They do. You can get them up to 135 to 140 miles an hour. Awesome brakes. It's a really good class to run. Yeah. And and it's one <laughs> of the few classes out there where you can still throw it on an open trailer and drive it yep. around behind a minivan, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, it might not be the best way to go about it, but you can still yeah. kind of find a way to do it somewhat on on the cheap, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, bang for the buck? I don't know. I, I, it's not too much better yeah. uh, for the money. Um, like a a new Ford now, she's, I don't know, they're like 75. Right. You know, if you want a good Continental, you're going to, you're going to put a lot of money into a good Continental. Uh, a used FE2, a decent one's going to be 55. Right. So, um, you can get a, a 500 for quite a bit less than that and have the same top end speed. Not sure. as much downforce. Uh, you have to work them a little harder. Uh, you have to work on them and tune them, but, uh, bang for the buck. Hard to beat a 500 or 600. Yeah. yeah. I, I always tell folks that the 600s and the Formula Vs are yeah. as, as – there's nothing cheap about motorsports. So anybody yeah. goes, you know, it's a cheap – no, there are no cheap race cars. There are, there are no. less expensive race cars. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but if you're looking for a way to get started or and, – and I always say that, but it seems like the people who race in Formula V and Formula 600 – they're not just getting started. They're racing these classes for years and years and years. And that just says that these people are, A, they found their tribe. They found the group of people they like to be with at the racetrack. Right. And they found a car that they just absolutely love to drive. Because if they didn't love to drive it, they wouldn't do it, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Hoosier Tires has been a, a really big um, help in promoting the class and supplying the tires for the class. So there used to be uh, two tire companies, but Hoosier is the one that stood by us through the end. And I try to give them kudos sure. to uh, Tim Gilvin and Bruce 
boss for for being there to support us and support the class. So, uh, yeah. The the old you... the older cars can they be upgraded to be relatively competitive these days? You know, um, at one time, I I think most of the classes were had a open nose, open wheel. Um, you you now, I think you really have to go to a a full body, you know. So um, they would have to be upgraded to a, a full a full body. Sure. Yeah, a sports car nose is the only way to go now. Right. Right. Yeah. But I suspect that if you if if there wasn't already an op, uh, a sports car nose for a particular car, but that's certainly something you could do, right? Right. Like Aaron Ellis's nose is totally different. Um, if you look at his car compared to our car, he puts a fairing in front of each wheel. The right. nose is so he's getting the same effect, and he's got plenty of top end. Sure. I think he's probably one of the the best in the traps trap speeds. And that's a that's a red devil. That's a yep. good car. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, so, yeah, I definitely the way to go. Yeah. So, any any aspirations to do a different car? I like I said, I know these a lot of people here love these cars. Any any thoughts on a different car, a different class, or are you F Formula Six Hundred ride or die? <laughs> well, you know, we we started off in Continentals and Five Hundreds, and. Um, um, we went from the Mondial to a Citation, mm -hmm. and we've had a Citation for quite a while. Um, it's got the Pinto in it, and it's it's been sitting there, and every time I go to the shop on Sundays to work on it, it goes, I want to work, I want to race too. <laughs> so I listened to it, and um, so we, we went ahead and talked to Steve Lathrop, and Lathrop's working with us to try and get some parts to put that thing back on the road. Okay. Um, we still have quite a bit of work to do, um, but um, I would love to take both of those cars to the runoffs. Sure. So I'm, I'm working on it. If we can get the Continental out and run the 500, it would be really fun to run run both classes. Right. So that's that's our next step. Okay. We, we, we looked at FE2. Um, I don't know. We have a citation, right? Uh, and that was a great car. I mean, we went really fast in it when we raced it. Right. So, yeah, it'd be fun to to put a long rod Pinto in it and see what she can do. Yeah. yeah fun. Well, I I look forward to seeing you out there in both those cars. That should be a ton of fun. What's up next for you as far as racing this year? Um. Well, we're going to pit in a couple weeks. Then it's um. Mid Ohio and Watkins Glen, the Sprints, um, maybe Gingerman back to the Cat, and uh, get ready for the runoffs. Do some testing. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, well, I, I will. Uh, I will try to find you at Mid Ohio and and shake your hand and have a conversation with you because I will be there for the perfect. Super Tour, and uh, awesome. and of course we'll be at the runoffs this year like we have the last several years. So. And uh, I, I just look forward to, to watching you out there. And, and your, your race this past year at the runoffs was just a hoot to watch. So, Oh, yeah. Uh, good luck with all of that. And uh, hopefully the schedule at the runoffs will be, will be kind to you. And uh, I hope so. Well, well I hope they're listening. Someone listen. <laughs> <laughs> Not on Sabbath, please. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All uh, right. Any any sponsors? Any people you want to thank before we get before we let you go here? Well, um, well, first praise the Lord for allowing me to do something that I really enjoy doing and I have a passion for, and uh, um, I I thank Him first for allowing me to do this. Uh, to um, my wife, I couldn't do it without her. She's been our team principal for for our our team, and she's. Uh, Stood by me and been my cheerleader since since we got married, forever. And um, my buddy Frank, uh, Frank Griffith, my crew chief, and Jim Frank. Jim Frank owns the Citation that I drive, and it's my, our cars are actually at at his shop. Um, I couldn't do it without Jim and his family. Uh, they've been big supporters. Carbotech brakes, uh, thank you. They I just got some brakes, so I'm looking forward to using them. And, um, and all the workers and SECA and the people that have, have been so kind to us over the years and supporting us. Um, 
it takes the it takes a village, and we appreciate all, all the help from people that have been person and all the kind words. It's been good. Yeah. Well. Thanks a bunch for joining us. Before we let you go, or before I let everybody go, I want to thank the folks who helped me do this. Up in our corner, I guess it would be that way. Uh, you'll see okay. their logos, Race Keepers, the official camera, in-car camera of the Inside the SCCA podcast. Also, the uh, Ray, uh, Stevie Ray and Ray Esports, the official sim racing league of Inside the SCCA. And then uh, our newest sponsor is Solo Performance Specialties. They, uh, they were part of our, our crew this year now on our on our program here and uh, met them when I did my first ever solo nationals last year. I was the happiest guy at uh, at Lincoln to finish last in his class. I had a ton of fun doing it and I'm hoping to go back again this year and maybe not finish last. <laughs> there you go. All right. But uh, those are all the folks who help us put the podcast on. So all of the information for those folks are in our show notes. Please click on them, find out more about them and and if you need to buy some stuff, go and 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 help them out and and do it from those people. So, Calvin Stewart, thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the the rest of the evening. Good luck with with the racing coming up next, and uh, we'll see you at Mid Ohio. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, that's going to do it for another episode of Inside the SCCA. If you like what you're hearing, subscribe to the Racing Wire Podcast Network and the Racing Network on YouTube, so you won't miss any episodes. Uh, also, leave a comment, uh, a good one especially. We prefer the good ones here. You can follow us on social media to find out who our next guest is. It's uh, Racing Wire Net on the Twitter, or X, but I'm always going to call it Twitter. A new episode every week. I'm Brian Belansky. Have yourself a fantastic weekend, and go play with cars. I'm Kelton Jago, and this is Inside the SCCA. Inside the SCCA is a presentation of the Racing Wire Podcast Network and Rural 15 Productions. This podcast is not affiliated with, endorsed, or sponsored by the Sports Car Club of America. The views expressed within are those of the host and our guests, and not that of the SCCA.